We have new photos from Paris, and they are absolutely chilling. They are the surveillance pictures from inside that kosher grocery store during those horrible hours as innocent citizens were gunned down by a vicious terrorist and while others quivering in fear for their lives. And today, exactly one week after the massacre at a Paris magazine office, Yemen's al-Qaeda branch bragging that they paid for and planned the Charlie Hebdo attack. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula gloating that the killings were revenge for the magazine publishing images of the Prophet Muhammad. But also today, defiant Parisians lining up to buy the newest issue of Charlie Hebdo. The magazine selling out in only minutes, and we have live team coverage from France to the United States. And we begin with Fox News correspondent Amy Kellogg, live in Paris. Amy. Hi, Greta. Well, I think we've all sort of wondered what it must have been like to be one of those hostages inside the kosher supermarket last Friday, the hyper kosher, as it was called. But now we have some images that actually show us the horror of what it was like to be inside that store. Uh, in the first pictures that we've managed to get our hands on, you see the terrorist himself, Ahmadi Koulibaly. Not only did he have plenty of ammunition, as we now know, but we see how he was dressed in jeans, a t-shirt, and a bulletproof vest. He's ordering one of the hostages to stand with his face to the wall. Koulibaly stands tall, appears confident, and not particularly rattled. Next, you see shoppers huddled together between the aisles, looking expressionless, almost blank, apparently just trying to stay calm, even as you later see the bodies of two of the victims right behind them at the cash registers. Finally, empty aisles and an abandoned baby stroller. Now, we do know that one man grabbed his toddler son and hid in a cooler down below with the help of a clever shop assistant until the ordeal was over. And finally, you see images of people climbing up on chairs. They were ordered, apparently, by their captor to smash the CCTV cameras to destroy them. But the footage was recorded elsewhere, so it was not destroyed. Uh, apparently, or probably, uh, it was in the possession of the security company that that had the cameras. Now the contrast between the images there, Greta, uh, the sort of expressionless images of the hostages and then the video that we remember of them breaking free when they were crying and, and you could see the panic fully on their faces just really is testimony to how much they had to hold inside during that horrible ordeal. One bit of late news tonight, Greta, These, this is not yet confirmed by the police, but there are many reports emerging here in France that Ahmedi Koulibaly and the Kouachi brothers, the two who uh, killed uh, 12 people at Charlie Hebdo, got their guns in Belgium. Apparently, Brussels is one of the biggest markets for illegal guns in Europe. And Koulibaly, according to these reports, went and got the guns with some sort of uh, credit loan. So, so much for the deep, deep pockets of these Islamist groups that claim to be or that they claim were supporting them. Uh, and the reason that there's these reports are coming out is that apparently the dealer turned himself into police credit because he now is worried, since he apparently swindled Koulibaly, that, he will, that, that the Islamist groups that he was affiliated with will come after this illegal gun dealer in Brussels. Greta. Amy, thank you. Obviously very chilling pictures. Thank you, Amy. And as we noted today, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula posting a video bragging it ordered and financed the Charlie Hebdo massacre. And Fox News Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Carriage joins us. They brag they, that they did this. Well, they did. It's an 11-minute video. They officially take responsibility for the attack. They say it was done with coordination with the overall leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, who's in Pakistan. And they said the American-born cleric Anwar al-Awlaki, who ran the plotting against the West for al-Qaeda in Yemen, was a central player. And as you know, we have independently confirmed that the 34-year-old Kouachi brother met with Anwar al-Awlaki in Yemen in 2011. But the bottom line is that we have never seen a fake tape from al-Qaeda in Yemen, and we've never seen a bogus claim of responsibility from that group either. Eleven mm -hmm. minutes is a very long time. Is that an unusually mm -hmm. long time of the tape? And, and what else are they saying for 11 minutes besides uh, gloating that they did it, mm -hmm. they paid for it, they mm -hmm. planned it? That's right. Um, what do you say in 11 well, minutes? Well, this kind of video is clearly for propaganda purposes. It's trying to lay out its case that it was responsible for what is seen in the jihadi world as a highly successful attack. 
There's going to be a lot of discussion here in Washington over whether al Qaeda in Yemen directed the attack. And earlier today, I spoke with a former Pentagon official who said there was clearly command and control by al Qaeda in Yemen. And what that means today is not that the leader of that group is picking up the phone and telling the Kawachi brothers it's time to act. Rather, what he's doing is identifying them, giving them money, giving them training, and then leaving the timing up to them, which is what it appears happened in this case. Since al Laki died in what, 2010? 2011. 2011. Mm -hmm. So, and this is 2015. Correct. So, you know, he may have given the directions, but it took a long time to execute. And the, and the CIA drone attack that killed him dramatically disrupted al Qaeda in Yemen. And that may, may very well explain what the gap is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Catherine, thank you. You're welcome.